ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします。What's up, everybody? Welcome to the channel. As always, I'm yours truly, your saga ghoul, the OG. And today I'm gonna be reviewing a very interesting and very controversially received anime called Neo Yokio, which is Netflix's first original anime. And just to be clear, Castlevania was done by American studios, so it's technically not an anime, even though it has a lot of. Anime influences on it. But New Yokio is done by two animation studios from Japan Production IG, who are obviously known from Kurogo no Basket, Haiku, and other high quality animes. I think they're very, very top of the notch animation studios out there. And then we have Studio Dean, which have done Nurario no Mago, Dragon Crisis, Giant Killing, the Unlimited Blade Works movie. They're also pretty good. Maybe more in the middle of the pack. They kind of have more. They do so much production, so not everything is on like on the same level. But you know, pretty good studios overall. And sadly, the quality of this anime is, well, I think below their bar. I don't think that they took this project very seriously by the looks of it. And neither did maybe Netflix. I mean, okay, so I think this is a very important part about the show because. Originally, it was supposed to run on Fox, but Fox, you know,、uh, decided to move it on FXX, which is their sister cable network, and then they really decided to drop it, and then Netflix acqu- acquired、um, the anime and the rights to it. So they own the show, which is, I gotta say, by the looks of it, by looking certain episodes, There's six episodes in this season. And by the looking of、uh, certain of the episodes and the dialogue, because there's no Japanese dubs, this is a whole on English, and you got your Jaden Smith, Susan Saradon, Jude Law, The Kid Mero, Des is Nice,、um, e- Ike Barinholtz, Stephen Fry.、Uh, pretty interesting lineup of voice actors. By, but I w- as I was saying, by the looks of it, certain of the episodes did look like. To me, at, at that, that they had changed the context of the dialogue, that the, the reactions and the movements of the characters didn't represent really of the dialogue. And I felt that the Fox maybe had something bit more different in store, what the show would be about, and the dialogues、uh, as a whole. And I felt that the Netflix version、uh, tended to change a lot of the things. And without going too much into politics spectrums and talking about politics, because I don't like to talk about politics. There are some elements of cultural Marxism in, in this、um, anime. And this is kind of like,、uh, those who don't know, it's a bit of a, like, a ideology that is you know, communist esque. And you, there's a lot of the themes with communism, especially the last two episodes. The main character you know, is shown to have this sort of a, like, a weird、uh, acceptance of communism of sorts. For you puppets of the West, communism forever. And then you have, you know, anti capitalist sentiments and, you know,、uh, interracial you know, relationships. And the white guys are, you know, the bad guys, obviously. And this sort of thing. So it's a very, very、uh, politically backed. I mean, it's not a show about politics, but you have some type of,、uh, you know, SJW type of themes in every episode, in some level or another. And it uses this weird sort of an episodic setting. The episodes five and six are rather connected to each other, but the first four episodes are really kind of, I guess, like introducing the characters, but they're not so really connected to each other. And going back to, like, of the editing, which was really sad for me because, you know, coming from anime background, Japan is. Number one, when it comes to creating OSTs, West is really behind on Netflix, has you know packed up you know、uh, their level by having theme songs, obviously. And some of the shows in the West, like、uh, maybe Dexter, have really good OSTs, but in general, West doesn't really care about that. And the f- music in this one really was lackluster or didn't really, there wasn't really music at many of the scenes. and If the Japanese studio would have done the sounds also for the show, it would have been much, much better. And I would even argue that if it was redone with Japanese voice actors, it would be better. But I mean, it was really, I mean, the show, it was pretty much a clusterfuck. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. Like, the show was kind of all over the place. 
Um, the animation quality was okay. I don't think it was as bad as it looked on the trailer. So that's something that I got to give it to you. But I, I would just say that a lot of the voice lines and the stories and the sort of SJW bullshit with pink hairs with everybody. Like, come on, what the fuck? Uh, I mean, it was pretty ridiculous. It was pretty ridiculous. And um, so what else? Obviously, there was shit ton of hid- hidden advertisements for the show. Toblerone. Gotta got, have your Toblerones, by the way. If you go to every ho- any hotel in Europe, you're going to open a mini bar. Uh, there's some Toblerones there. And by the way, Toblerones are fucking garbage chocolate. If you think that Toblerone is actually high quality, premium chocolate, go fuck yourself. <laughs> I mean, seriously, it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad for coming from, you know, from a country which has very good Swiss chocolate. You know, it's just not on the level. Toblerone is garbage, okay? Now, but enough about Toblerones and the hidden advertisements. But also, the show revolves quite around um, the fashion, and the main character, Kaz Khan, played by Jaden Smith. You know, he is this um, magistocrat, which is this sort of a, like, um, demon-slaying people. They were like some rats, and they were turned into human in exchange for their magical powers to protect the world. And some shit that they were exercising demons out and the world is now peaceful. And I mean, as a story and the whole setting is kind of all over the place. I mean, to be honest, I don't really think you should pay a lot of attention to it. And uh, that kind of alludes to what I said earlier, that it seemed to me that some of the narratives and the dialogues were kind of changed uh, from the original Fox version. I don't really know this, but I'm just kind of getting the hunch that something like this was probably a part that they changed a lot of the dialogue and story to be... It, it could have been... If there was a Japanese version, I think it would be totally different. Uh, then there's probably a Japanese dub for it. But going back to the hidden advertisements, there's a lot of them. There's like a lot of clothing lies, you know, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, and you name it. I'm not really, obviously, very well known with these, uh, v, you know, ladies and very fashionable um, clothing lines, but they're advertised quite a lot throughout the show. And, like, almost mentioned in every episode, and you will be seeing the, you know, plastic bags with the logos. A lot of marketing. A lot of marketing. Also, Toblerone appears, like, fucking four times or something. And, <laughs> I mean, it just seems to me that, that the show was really just um, a promotional piece. And rather being a show just, like, filled with advertisements for these clothing uh, companies for me. Um, the story, I mean, as I, as I kind of alluded earlier, it's kind of non-existent. Uh, it's not like there's a big plot that you want to follow. It's kind of random, and it's really about Kaz Khan, you know, changing the girlfriends over and over again, and, uh, you know, doing the magistocrat type of duties, you know, exercising demons and shit, and, you know, helping her, helping his friends, and I don't know. Some of the voice actors were really cringy, I gotta say that. I mean, Steve Buscemi was also that remember, remember Branser with Ridiculous name, by the way. Um, really weird character also. I mean, I mean, the show was kind of all over the place. No wonder Fox dropped it and, you know, <laughs> dodged the bullet with the um, communist elements. I mean, the, like literally Russians with communist flags and shit on the latter two episodes. It was just so much, uh, this fucking random shit. I, I don't really know what to say about this show, but overall, um, if you want to watch something totally different... This might be the show for you. But, I mean, somebody who's not really a fan of cultural Marxism and, you know, Jane and Smith in general. I mean, he makes good music. Don't get me wrong, guys. He makes good music. But he has kind of really weird tweets, you know. Are mirrors real? And yeah. <laughs> Okay. I'm not going to, like, spend any more time with Neo Yokio. That's pretty much what I had to say about it. The animation quality, okay. Uh, voice acting and the audio and the music pretty pretty low level um it would have been very interesting to see a japanese version by with japanese cast and music it would have probably been much better and i would have wanted to see an opening song or ending song because that's a very japanese thing to do and you're not really getting japanese um anime audience to really convert it into netflix by giving them fucking neo yokio this is not gonna be netflix just doesn't understand the market at all at all, at all, at all. It's just fucking shit show, okay? But that's what I gotta say. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time on the next video. Please make sure to subscribe and ask me questions and comment, and we can debate about certain elements of this show. How do you feel about it? Is it really cultural Marxism, or is am I overreacting to it? Maybe. And see you guys next time. Cheers.